Praise the Lord. What a joy to be with you tonight. I trust that your week has been great and you are basting in energy and in strength in the presence of God. I believe that this service is designed to be a great blessing to your life. And I want you to uh, make sure you start a watch party. Share the link with as many people as possible. If you are new to our YouTube channel, I also want to encourage you, go ahead, subscribe and click the bell button so that subsequently you'll be notified every time we are on. This service will surely be a great blessing to you. Share it so as many people as possible can also be blessed. Great. Let's bow our heads even as we get into the word of God tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you for tonight. Thank you for the privilege of appearing before you. Thank you. The Bible said, blessed is the man whom you choose and cause to approach on you. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for causing us, giving us the grace to appear before you. Tonight, our hearts are hungry, our souls are longing. We ask the Lord, you speak to our hearts. Let every chain, every challenge be transformed by the power of your word. Let the prophetic word go forward with precision and understanding. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation flow. Grant me utterance like never before. Spirit of God, help me today, even as I seek to bring help through your word to your people. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, God bless you. We are gradually closing the curtain on a series on the end times, particularly understanding the times and the seasons. So you want to come with me to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5, First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1. This is what the Bible says. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Of the times and the seasons, you have no need I write unto you. So that's where our theme, our broad focus on understanding the times and the seasons. That's where we took it from. Again, we see that in Acts chapter 1 verse 7. And he said, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own authority. And then of course... Uh, First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32, it tells us that of the men of Issachar and of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times and knew to know what Israel ought to do. When you understand the times, you are always in a position to know the right steps to take, the right action to take. So an understanding of the times is critical for you to live your full life, for you to live an impactful life, for you to live a possible life. That's what this teaching is designed for. In these times, in these seasons, and certain times and certain seasons, it's important that we understand God's perspective on these times so that we can better prepare ourselves for what is ahead. And so we looked at a number of areas, but presently our focus is on the end times. Our focus is on the end times. And so we've been reading from first, second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Second Thessalonians 2, 1 to 3. Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and how we'll be gathered to meet him. He says, Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Don't believe them. Even if they claim to have a spiritual vision, a revelation or a letter supposedly from us. Verse 3. He said, don't be fooled by what they say. For that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man who brings destruction. So that is Paul. Paul sought to bring clarity to the church of Thessalonica about the events of the end times. And that is what we've been seeking to do. I'm not doing a full exegesis of the end times, but I'm just walking you through some key areas that are very important. In our early series, I talked to you about the fact that there are two comings of the Lord, the first coming and the second coming. And our focus has been largely on the second, on the first coming. That's what my teaching has largely been on. At another time, at an appropriate uh, season, we will get to look at the other coming as well. But this teaching is largely limited in many respects to the first coming, which has to do with the rapture. So, we said that when it has to do with the events of the second coming of Christ, there are four things that scripture expects of us. Four things. One, we say scripture expects us to wait for it. 
Once we are saved, once we are born again, once we are spirit filled, we need to be waiting for the coming of the Lord. The next biggest thing that is expected to happen on the Christian calendar is the coming of the Lord, the rapture of the saints. And then number two is to work. While we wait, God expects us to work. Scripture says, occupy till I come. So we need to do business till he comes. You and I have a business to do. We have a business to ring souls. We have a business to impart our world. We have a business to touch lives. That is a business we are expected to execute until Christ comes. So we are not just waiting passively. We are not just whiling away time. We are working to fulfill God's purpose for our lives and his program for the end times. And then of course, number three is to watch. The third is to watch. We are to work. We are to we are to wait, we are to work, and then we are to watch. And presently, we are on the call to watch. Last week, I started teaching on the call to watch. The word watch means to be sleep, sleepless or keep awake. When the Bible says watch, is used in several references. But one of the meanings in, in reference to the second coming of Christ has to do with to be sleepless or to stay awake. To be awake. To be circumspect, to be attentive, or to be ready. So to watch means we must stay ready. When the Bible says we must watch, because we do not know the hour. In the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, 5, verse 6, let's see what the Bible says. It says, Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. We are to watch and be sober. We are to watch and be sober. Matthew 25, verse 13. He says, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. That is what we are called to do. So, when we say we are to watch, it means we should stay ready. We should be sleepless. We should keep awake. It doesn't literally mean that be sleepless or don't sleep. That's not what it means. It simply means that don't be, don't be asleep spiritually. That is exactly the context that sec- first First Thessalonians chapter 5 puts it. First Thessalonians 5 says, He said, Let us not sleep. That is what it means. We must stay watchful. We must stay alert. We must stay attentive. Another meaning of the word watch has to do with to follow or to chase. In other words, while we wait, we must be chasing after the Lord. May the grace to chase after the Lord rest upon you. Receive the anointing and the grace to be a God chaser. So he's coming for people who are waiting for him. He's coming for people who are working for him. He's coming for people who are watching for him. May you be found among the company of watchers in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we looked at watching and we established that there are three important reasons why we need to watch. We said we need to watch because of the secrecy of the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord, the day that the Lord shall be revealed, the day he shall appear to rapture the saints unto glory, is a day that nobody knows. In the book of Matthew, we are told that the Father, only the Father knows. The angels don't know. You and I don't know. Scripture gives us no clue about the day of his coming. While we are clueless about the return of the Lord, we are informed about signs that will show us or will give us clues that the day is near. So none of us can be specific in telling the exact day the Lord will return. But we have been given abundant clues in scripture that helps us to be able to know that as we see these signs, the day is drawing closer and closer. So that is it. We need to watch because of the secrecy of the coming of the Lord. Number two, we need to watch because of the suddenness of his coming. We are told in the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 3, First Thessalonians 5, 3. He said, For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction. Again, in First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52, he says, For behold, I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. So suddenly it will happen. The rapture would happen at the blink of a second. At the blink of an eye. By the time you say, Jack, Jesus has appeared. And then the saints who are ready and waiting are captured. 
I'm happy to announce to you that you will be part of those saints. When he shall appear, the Bible said, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. May you stay ready until he appears. And may you be ready to meet him when he appears in the skies. And then of course, number three, we said that we need to watch because there are signs to watch out for. If he said we should watch, then obviously there must be something to look out for. You don't say watch when there is nothing to see. The Bible says we should watch because there are signs to look out for. We are told in the book of Matthew 25, verse 3, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when would these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age? And today we want to take that step further and speak on the signs of his coming. He says, Tell us when he sat there, verse 4, Let's go to verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name saying, I'm the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled. In other words, see that you are not afraid. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines pestilence and earthquakes in various places famines pestilence earthquakes in various places nation will rise against nation kingdom against kingdom it says there will be wars and rumors of war verse 3 says while he sat they came to him and said tell us when shall these things be and what will be the sign of of your coming and the end of age so there we see two categories of signs two categories of signs one has to do with the sign of his coming two categories of signs in verse 3 the sign of his coming look at verse 3 again he said tell us when would these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age so jesus is going to walk them through some signs and the signs is going to walk them through can be grouped into two main uh, categories one is the sign of his coming the sign and because i already mentioned to you that there are two comings that here we have signs of his first coming we also have signs of his second coming and then on the end of age so there are two signs there we have signs of his coming and we have signs of the end of age signs of his coming and signs of the end of age our focus once again is on the signs of his coming particularly on the signs of his first coming the signs of the end of age the signs of the second coming at an ideal time i'll come to teach on that so when you go through the book of matthew chapter 24 in revelations in the book of uh, daniel we have a lot in fact most of the prophets spoke about the coming of the lord the second coming of the Lord. And there are a lot of prophecies in scripture about it. And there are diverse signs. In fact, some theologians believe that there are about 1,500 signs of the coming of the Lord. Some of them relating to the, the first coming, others the second coming, and the end of it. So, there are diverse of them, and they are too numerous to count. But, I would want to zero in on four areas four areas that you can i believe you can easily relate with four areas four signs come with me to Matthew, uh, luke chapter 24 verse 1 to 8 luke 24 verse 8 to 12 and he said take heed that you not be deceived for many will come in my name saying i am he and the time the time has drawn nigh therefore do not go after them go to verse 9 when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified. For these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. And he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, and famines, and pestilence, and there will be fearful sights, and great signs from heaven. But before these things, all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you to, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and rulers 
for my name's sake. Many signs here. I don't have time to exhaust all of the signs. And I've told you already, some of them relate to the end of age. So we are looking at some of these things I'm sharing with you. Actually, some of them also relate to the end of age in itself. Particularly the first time, the first one I'm going to talk about. Four signs. One is deception. Deception. The first thing Jesus mentions when they ask him to tell them about the signs of his coming. He says, take heed that you be not deceived. Take heed, you will be not deceived. In almost all the accounts, Mark, Luke, all of these uh, accounts, Matthew, they all register, take heed that you will be not deceived. They warn us about the need to be careful we are not deceived. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. He said, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Take heed that no one deceives you. You remember that when Apostle Paul was also speaking in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 1 to 3, he said, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him, we ask you not to be soon shaken or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter as from us, as the day of the Lord had already come. Let no one deceive you, for the day will not come. So, you see, Paul agrees there will be deception around it. Jesus said it. Paul agrees and consistently we see it. In our times, we see it. We see it. Deception is on the increase. Deception. In the last days, one of the things that we will witness is great deception. Those of you who are in Ghana, if you have been following, uh, occasionally when I chance upon the video on Facebook, I watch some. And when I listen to some of the things that fake prophets are saying, people who have identified with them, practically work with them, say, about them, about fake prophets through this uh, Kennedy and Japan uh, videos. It's amazing. Deception is on the increase. People doing all kinds of things just to deceive people. That is the era we live in. Look at what the Bible says, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. He said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead and disappearing. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. He says, convince, exhort, and with all long suffering and teaching. Then he says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own last, they shall heed to themselves teachers, having eaten ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. That is the time we live in. People don't want to hear the truth. People don't want to hear the truth. People want to prosper, but they don't want to hear the truth about living a godly life. So they do all kinds of things. People want to be great, but they don't want to hear the truth about the right pathway to greatness. So there's a lot of deception. There's a lot of deception going on. And you need to be careful. The kind of person you listen to, the kind of uh, the message you listen to, the kind of preacher you sit under, because it's very important. You have to make sure that wherever you are planted is a place where you are taught the word of God, precept upon precept, line upon line. And the person you are under or following and lives by example. It's important. That is the era we live in. We live in an era of great deception. Great deception. False believers, false pastors, false apostles, false, false teachers, all around us. All around us. And I pray that you'll be discerning. That's why you need to grow. And I am excited about what I'm teaching in our Sunday services this week, this month. The need for us to grow spiritually. Because you see, if you fail to grow, you can easily be deceived. It, it, you have to be a baby Christian for somebody to tell you, I, uh, you, God wants to give you a child, but I have to sleep with you before I give you a child. I mean, that's nonsense. You have to be a baby Christian to be told that you have to go and bath by the seaside at a certain time of the night before you can conceive. I mean, the Bible said, I would that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. Pray everywhere. Pray everywhere. In other words, you can pray in your room. You don't need to climb any mountain for God to hear you. It's important that we understand that these are times of great deceptions. And we, we have deception going on, but we have, it's going to be on the increase. That's why you need to be established in truth. You need to be grounded in the word of God. You need to know God for yourself. You need to be able to study the word of God for yourself. You need to be able to hear the Holy Spirit by yourself. 
There are some things that may look like it's okay, but not until the Holy Spirit gives you a witness about it. And most of us, our relationship with the Holy Spirit is not on track. That's why you need to deepen your relationship with God. Stay in fellowship with him so that it may look obviously okay on the outside. The Holy Spirit can give you a witness about it. That's very critical. That's number one. Number two, the, the second sign is distressing or difficult times. First is deception. The second is distressing or difficult times. That's one of the things the Bible says. That in the last days, one of the things that will characterize the last days is that distresses, discomfort, difficulties shall characterize the end times. Look at what the Bible says in Luke chapter 21 verse 25. And there will be signs in the heaven, in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and on earth, distress of nations. On earth, on the earth, there will be distress of nations. And if you have never seen the nations in perplexity and distress, I'm sure that the COVID 19 has showed you. In our own nation, distresses here and there. In the nations, advanced nations are going through the distress. The, the great distresses that the COVID-19 has brought upon the nations of the earth. Perplexity. Nations simply don't know what to do. Difficult times. Hard to bear times. That's what the Bible says. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. Remember that there will be difficult times in the last days. That's what the Bible says. Again, 2 Timothy 3 1. The Amplified Version says, but understand this. That in the last days will come certain perilous times of great distress great stress and trouble hard to deal with and hard to bear hard to deal with and hard to bear these are difficult times these are hard times for anybody to be alive but the good news is that whosoever is born of god overcomes the world so that no matter how distressing the world gets if you are born again you will be going up and up and up and i see you go up and up you can go ahead and type in the comment box i'm going up and up because that's where you belong not all of us will sink with the distressing times no some will make it in every generation at any time of history where men have come to their wit end the people who know they are God have always been strong and they've done exploits. And I see you doing great exploits. Your life will do great exploits. Your business will do great exploits. Your family will do great exploits. Your ministry will do great exploits. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and type amen. So there will be distressing times. Great times of stress. And there will be coming. The distressing times will come as a result of fearful news. That will be hearing fearful news. And if there is a generation where fearful news abound, it's in this generation. We have a generation where we can access news by the minute, by the second. Facebook, online news portals, CNN, you can get news by the minute, by the second. Things happen far away in the US and in a split second you know about it. But most of these news are bad news. Is it not sad that it is only bad news that sells? When there is good news, people don't make noise about it. Bad news sells, bad news travels. But the Bible says in the last days, there will be great distress. And I'm telling you that they are going to come because of the abundance of terrifying or bad news. Luke 21 verse 9. He said, but when you hear of wars and commotions, when you hear of wars and commotions, so when you hear them, and when you hear them, your heart will be frightened. That's why Jesus said, do not be troubled. When he was given that account in Matthew, he said, when you hear of these things, don't be troubled. Even here, he says, when you hear of wars and commotion, do not be terrified. For you, the child of God, when you hear, you should not be afraid. The Bible says, fear ye not their fear. Sanctify the Lord of hosts and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. So we will hear of them. You will hear of nation going to war. And we'll be hearing all of these things. Down, uh, what do you call, threat of war. North Korea, every now and then you hear of the U.S. threatening them. They will also be issuing threats back. And these are believed to be, both U.S. we know, to be nuclear powered. Uh, people, people also believe that North Korea is also nuclear powered. It's a nuclear powered nation. And the moment nuclear power is not like atomic power, like what happened in the Japan doses, nuclear power can simply collapse the nations. Praise God. 
that's why it's important that we appreciate why we are in in this circle the times we are in when we hear of such things when you hear that the plane is flying from uh, ukraine to canada or so and then that plane is shot by uh, iranian missiles that is uh, terrible news if you are somebody who does business or who flies a lot you fear news of fear all over the place and not only will news of fear bring distress but perplexing and complex problems define political or scientific solutions those are problems that will put the world under great distress perplexing and complex problems that will defy political or scientific solution covid 19 has defied political solution it does define scientific solution they are still battling with it every day they keep on changing the science and the symptoms nobody knows what will happen nobody knows the true antidote they are struggling to race against time to get a vaccine that is a challenge and everybody seems to be afraid for his life but i see grace coming upon you i see you walk in faith and not in fear these are things that will happen that will put the world under great distress then of course there will be distressing times because of human depravity human beings are going to be very depraved and then intense persecution of the saints intense persecution of christians will also bring about great distress and we see, we see it going on you hear of boko haram harassing christians in northern nigeria you hear of other places in the asian nations where some christians are uh, subjected to inhuman treatment some of them are killed these are things that will challenge our faith in these times but through it all we are more than conquerors and then of course number three is disasters so the first sign is deception the second sign is distress distressing things or distressing difficult stuff and then of course is disasters disasters look at what the bible says the bible talks about the disasters in luke chapter 21 verse 11 and there will be great earthquakes there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilence and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven there will be great earthquakes tsunami is uh, great it's about normal earthquakes when I, <laughs> I don't know how to even describe tsunami to you but if you are around when the tsunami hit japan you know about it you see what happened the sea so rose up that three-story buildings and above were brought down that is dangerous earthquakes disasters natural disasters in diverse places increased occurrence of natural disasters earthquakes fires tsunamis and volcanoes floods in the u.s you saw, you saw i'm sure if you listen to the news you saw it in louisiana and then places like uh, uh, New Orleans, the floods that took over those places. In places like Sri, Sri Lanka, the floods that took over those places. Fires. Fires consume a uh, landmass of, of about 2 million acres. In places like California, in places like New, uh, uh, what do you call it, Australia. Fires. These are natural disasters. And all of these are pointers to the end times these are pointers to the end times and then of course the final one i want to leave you with tonight is degeneration of morals so we have deception we have distressing times and then we have disasters and of course we have degeneration of morals degeneration degeneration of morals this is a generation that has no or lose morals look at what the bible says about this in first in the book of timothy second timothy chapter three but understand this amplifies says that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble hard to deal with and hard to bear for people will be lovers of themselves and utterly self-centered lovers of money aroused by inordinate greedy desire for wealth proud arrogant contemptuous boasters they will be abusive blasphemous scoffing disobedient to parents or ungrateful unholy profane they will be without natural or human affection 
callous and inhumane, relentless, admitting of no truth or appeasement. They will be slanderous, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate, loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce haters of good. If you want to know how people will be in the last days, this is what the Bible says people are going to be. Don't you see people who talk as if they own the world? Haven't you met some of such people? This is a generation that is so arrogant and proud. Even when God, through this, uh, though he didn't uh, 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 cause it, he allowed it. Nations are still believing that they are super nation. But if you are a super nation, why is it that you have not subdued COVID-19? People are proud, arrogant, inhuman. The Bible said people will be without natural human feeling. They will be without natural human affection. Callous and inhuman. If you look at George Floyd, the gentleman that was murdered recently in the U.S., a human being who uh, placed his knee, knee on the neck of another person. And the person says, I can breathe, I can breathe, I can breathe. And he watched him die. He watched him die. What a way to die. How callous can we be? That is a human heart. The Bible says, the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And in the last days, people will be wicked. I had one news item of a, a lady who was living with her husband happily. The husband is a very good man. In fact, if after the whole incident, the way the man behaved, you could see that the man is a good man. This woman went and was sleeping around with another person. A boyfriend. And then decided that they were going to kill the man together. And unfortunately, in their attempt, miraculously, they went to call a policeman to be the killer. They, in calling the, the killer, the person that had been hired to do the assassination, the, the number, some way, somehow, supernaturally, went to call a policeman. And the policeman disguised himself as if he's a killer and eventually led to the arrest of the man. Can you imagine? You are living in the same room, sharing the same roof, sharing the same bed with a woman called your wife. And she plans with another person to kill him. That's how wicked the world is getting. That's how loose the world is getting. There is no place for morality again. There is no sense of good and evil. Decency has been thrown to the wind. You see a lady dressed and you can't tell whether he's going to the disco or he's going to where. I mean, everything, morality has so degenerated. That is the end time. It's, these are pointers that we are close to the end. People no longer care about what they wear and who, who, what you think about what they wear. This is the generation we live in. People cannot be counseled. People cannot be talked to. People cannot be spoken to. People are so proud. Even when they have heard and they should admit, they are not ready to admit it. That is it. If you want to know the characteristics of people in the last days, 2 Timothy 3 is a book you must study. Verse 3 all the way down. It gives us a detailed account of how people will behave. People will be unholy. People will be coming to church. It talks about it. People will come to church and will still be living on holy lives. They will come to church, they hear the word of God, and they will still do the thing they want to do. Some will come to church, and they will still go back to their boyfriends and be sleeping with them. Some will come to church, but they will leave alcohol. Some will come to church. These are obvious signs of the end time. It's not something the pastor can do something about. Sometimes, some people in their self-righteousness now begin to argue with their pastors why certain actions have not been taken against certain people in the church. No, nobody can take an action against them because these are prophetic things that were declared by the word of God. What is important is that make sure in these times, you stay watchful, you stay alert. The Bible tells us how to deal with such people. It says people like this, when they are in our midst, we should turn away from them. When you read down, that's what the Bible says. And I pray that the grace of God will rest upon you. That as these signs, signs of deception is around us, great distress is around us, disasters everywhere. I pray that the grace of God will keep you. As people degenerate in their morals, I pray that the grace of God, the spirit of God will keep you and preserve you until the coming of the Lord. The Lord bless you and the Lord will keep you if you tune into this broadcast today. The Lord bless you. If you are watching, maybe you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You want to say, Pastor, I want to be born again. I want to give my life to the Lord. I want you to pray this simple prayer of faith with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. And I thank you for your blood that was shed for me. 
Today, I confess you. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' precious name. With my mouth, I confess you are Lord. And with my heart, I believe you were raised from the dead. Thank you for being my Lord in Jesus' precious name. If you pray that prayer in faith, I want you to know that you are born again. The Spirit of God has taken residence in you. You are a brand new person. We want to help you uh, go in your grow in your walk with God. And so I want to encourage you. Pick the email address. Send us a mail. Send us a WhatsApp. We want to be in touch with you and see you grow and become all God will have you become. The Lord bless you.